couple of weeks ago I posted a tutorial on how to work with 8x8 LED individually addressable matrices, I promised you that I will create uh, some projects with that component. One of the ideas I had was to create a cool clock with 3D printed case. Creating such clock is not really difficult. A matrix is just a medium of displaying time read off RTC module. No real challenges there. It gets more difficult though when we start defining cool ways the digits transition from one to another. Currently I have just one of those matrices and the other three are on their way from China. I can however start working on a clock case and if I cannot display time, what other options do I have to start designing my digit transitions? Counting down from 9 to 0. And oh boy, I'm gonna do this countdown in more ways than one. <laughs> There's also a light version of this video, minus all the tech talk showing just the result of the project. So you might want to check it out as well. First step would be to design the case. In my previous video I 3D designed a diffusion panel for the matrix. We'll start from where we left off to create uh, the entire case. The idea for the clock is to have four separate cases for each digit and also additional case for dot separators. But let's not get ahead of ourselves and wait for the components to arrive. After adding some additional fine details for the case, design is now ready to be printed. Looks okay, it will be a few weeks before I can check if all the components would properly fit into it, but for today's video it will do. Now that we have the case, we have to come up with a digit style. I thought we can have digits with color shading that would look more or less like this. Let's look how to display a single digit on that matrix. For each digit we create 8x8 array corresponding to pixel layout. In that array 0 stands for background, 1 stands for digit, 2 stands for shading outline of the digit. Variable current digit stores the digit that is currently being displayed on the matrix. The code to display the digit looks like this. The custom function check pixel in digit is taking current digit value and looks for the corresponding digit array and in that array for the entry with i and j coordinates. Depending whether the value read is 0, 1 or 2, we display pixel in background, digit or shading color. The first digit transition would be the most basic one. We would be displaying digits in sequence starting from 9. We use the same nested for statements we talked about and we build loop function around it. After running those for statements, we execute fastLED show to display current digit on the matrix. The current value is decreased so the next time loop function is run, we display next digit in a sequence. We also generate random color for the next loop run. The pool of colors is stored in a colors array. 
If we reach zero, we reset current value to nine. Here is how the countdown looks on this matrix. Next transition is nearly identical. The only thing we are adding here is fading out effect. After displaying each digit, we fade out LEDs until digit completely disappears. Only then, the next to come digit is displayed. Moving on to more complex transitions. Here, after displaying a digit, we randomly select a pixel and change the color of that pixel to a random value. After repeating this step 100 times, the digit disappears and we have the matrix filled with mixed color pixels. Then we repeat similar action, but now instead of generating a random color for the pixel, we randomly select the pixel and use check pixel in digit function to fill it with the pixel belonging to the digits we are transitioning to. Here are the two segments responsible for both stages of a transition. And this is how it looks displayed on the matrix. In line eraser transitions, you have a horizontal line moving across the display from top to bottom, erasing current digit and revealing the next one. In this transition, we have to introduce a next set of variables for storing the value of the next digits to display and its color. In code, we start with our standard nested for loop and we add a third for loop to it. Each time, the code within this loop is executed, depending on the value of Y variable, we either display pixels belonging to the current digit or draw the line of green pixels making the eraser line or draw pixels belonging to the current digit. Here is how this transition looks like on this display. The last transition is clockwise transition, where we have a razor line moving like a hand of the clock, erasing the current digits to the solid background with a random color, only to move around the clock again to reveal the next digit. The code here is significantly more complex, so I will not be explaining it. You will find the link to the code below, and I leave it for you to figure it out. Let's now see all the transitions displayed one by one.
Now that was an explosive conclusion to this video. Can you think of any other cool digit transitions I can implement? Let me know in the comments below. If I can get 3-4 cool ideas that I like, I might do another video and ultimately use those transitions in my clock as well. If you're interested to see how this digital clock is going to turn out, I guess you have no other options than to subscribe to my channel. I wouldn't mind if you hit that like button below either. See you in my next video.